Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. I'm Nick DeSanct to bring you along for a closer look inside Army Athletics. Today we'll hear from a cross country senior captain, look back at football's Friday night home opener and get some soccer strategy. First on today's slate is our Cadet Spotlight, a 2013 cross country team captain. This senior has consistently finished in the top of the team and earned all Patriot League second team honors in 2012. Night Vision talks with Ricardo Galindo in this week's Cadet Spotlight. Rich DeMarco back in the Cadet Spotlight, joined by first classman Ricardo Galindo from the Army men's cross country team. Ricardo, thank you for a couple of minutes here on the Spotlight and getting set for the Army Open. You guys will open up the season coming up on Friday. Yes, uh, first meeting of the season, ready to kick it off. You guys have been getting a lot of good training in uh, this summer, so we're excited to see where we're at to start off the season. You're coming off a great year. Army's top time in all seven races, second team all Patriot League selection. Tell me about your 2012 year. Uh, definitely put in a lot of work. Uh, I was ready to you know get up there, be a good contributing member to the team, and you know a lot of it was just pushing myself day in day out to you know get ready to win those big races, especially big ones you know like Army Navy or put myself up there in the Patriot League. Ricardo, you're a native of Farmington Hills, Michigan. Tell me when you first started getting involved in running and specifically cross country. Um, I first started running around third grade, I believe. My mom would take me out and, you know, we'd go for some shorter runs, you know, two, three miles at the most. Um, I joined cross country my in seventh grade. Uh, small middle school team, me and a couple buddies decided to go run. Um, ran through middle school, and then uh, I actually didn't join the cross country team to start off with my first year of high school. I played soccer for a year and then went out and ran the last few races of cross-country season and then got cut from soccer and ended up uh, joining the cross-country team my sophomore year and ran all the way up until college. Well, that was a good choice that ended up being for you, running in. And tell me about the decision to come to West Point and the opportunity to become a cadet and also, of course, an athlete. Well, I definitely had been looking at a military career for a while, and I, would, I had looked at um, ROTC options and uh, the Air Force Academy as well. Uh, but in the end, I thought that, you know, joining the Army was the thing that I really wanted to do. And I believe that going to West Point would have been my best option for following that career choice and being able to serve and give back. Well, Ricardo, we appreciate a couple of minutes in the cadet spotlight. And best of luck coming up on Friday at Thank the you. Army Open and all season long. Thank you very much. That's Ricardo Galindo from the Army Men's Cross Country team, and the team opens up its 2013 season with a meet on Friday, the Army Open, taking place at the West Point Ski Slope. With the Cadet Spotlight, for Night Vision, I'm Rich DeMarco. Next up, we're going to get some insight from the Army Men's Soccer head coach, Russell Payne. Set pieces are the plays of soccer, provide an excellent advantage and opportunity for the attacking team. Coach Payne draws one up for us in this week's Coach's Corner. I'm head men's soccer coach Russell Payne, and today we're going to talk about attacking free kicks. In this situation, we've got a foul that's occurred in this area of the field, our right side of the field. Typically what will happen when a foul occurs is the defending team, highlighted in red, will set up a wall, a defensive wall. The defensive wall can be no closer than, than 10 yards to the spot of the foul. So in this case, we'll indicate the ball will be in blue, and the ball will be in this location here. Okay, which means your defensive team in red, most likely with a, with a foul that occurs 35 yards from goal, will set up a two-person wall. Because we want to show that the defensive team will also have most of their players back to defend in an area about 18 yards from their own goal, which is denoted by the top of the box, to make sure that any of the attacking players who will be in black will be nice and marked and taken care of. Because the foul occurs on the right side of the field for the attacking team, you're most likely going to put a left-footed player over the ball. Now a left-footed player will hopefully be allowed to hit a ball with his left foot that will swing in towards goal. A left-footed player gives us a chance to hit a ball that is served in and if it misses any of our players making runs, it still has a chance to go into the back post of the goal. Of course, you want to have 
some defenders back to make sure <clears throat> in the event of a counterattack that the opposing team cannot come back out. So you're most likely going to have another player of yours in between, making nine. You can put two players over the ball to make sure that you have the option of playing a short pass. Okay, so that's ten. And then, of course, you're going to have a goalkeeper at the other end of the field for yourself down here. Defensive team will always have a player in what we call in soccer in the hole. This is a dangerous area. If you put a good player on this ball, especially a left-footed player, he can potentially put a ball in this area straight on goal, and it makes a difficult play for the goalkeeper to make. So that's your setup for a free kick. Now we're talking about the attacking team in black, so we're going to highlight the attacking team now, now that we have the players in red, the defending team all set up here. Left-footed player standing over the ball. Our left-footed player is trying to serve a ball with his left foot that beats the wall, meaning goes over the wall, beats the man in the hole, means goes over the hole, and lands in an area that the ball can still wind up in this back post here, but lands in an area of the field denoted by those dots. The job of the five players now at the top of the box is to make runs, designated runs, so that they meet the ball as it meets, as it lands in this area of the field. And what the players will do prior to the free kick is they'll discuss with each other in training and in the lead up to the game, hey, I'm gonna make the back post run. So this player will make sure that his run ends up in this area. We can have a player making a near post run. We can have another player making a second near post run. And then we can have a player making a middle run here to the six and we can have a secondary back post run. All right, so if we blanket the six yard box, this being your six yard box here in front of the goal with multiple runs, the chance of this ball being delivered and being dealt with by one of our attacking players is very high. The best thing that this player can do on the ball is to, is to deliver a ball into the path of any one of these players and if it hits nobody, it still goes in the goal. That's what we're going for here and any ball that gets served in, it'll be met by hopefully one of these players here, and they'll have a first time header into goal, or first time finish into goal, and if nobody touches it, the ball hopefully can go directly into the goal uncontested. When you earn a free kick in this part of the field, you wanna make sure you've designated your setup, you wanna make sure everybody knows their runs, and you wanna make sure you have a competent player over top of the ball preparing to serve in a ball that can give you a chance to score and that's an attacking free kick. The soccer team on the road this weekend as Coach Payne's squad will go out to take on the Falcons of Air Force out in Colorado Springs. Matchups scheduled for 7 o'clock on Saturday. The Army football team opened its season on Friday night with a 28-12 victory over Morgan State. Here are some sights and sounds from that Friday night matchup. Two-yard line, Grochowski advancing on the football. The 2013 Army football season is underway.
night, man. Good, sir. You doing all right? I'm doing great. How about you, sir? Good. Thank you. Big Boys Toys is your one-stop shop. G is doing a, a, a check presentation in the uh And Army moves to 1-0 on the 2013 season, defeating Morgan State on a Friday night by the final score of 28-12. Football travels out to Indiana this weekend for a Saturday 1 o'clock matchup with Ball State. Lastly today, we hand the microphone off to the cross-country team for 15 seconds with Army Athletics. Hi, I'm Liz O'Donnell. And I'm Kendall Ward. We have a cross-country meet this Friday at the golf course. I'm uh, hoping you all can come out and watch. We've been running really hard this preseason. I think we're going to do pretty well. Four o'clock. Go, Go Army! Army! Cross Country, the only team competing here at West Point this weekend. Everyone else will be out on the road. For the complete schedule and game times, visit GoArmySports.com. Thanks so much for joining us on this week's edition of Black Knights Weekly. Until next time, I'm Nick DeSanctis. Go Army!